Hey everyone, and welcome to day two of the advent of code uh, in Haskell. So yesterday we had a lot of fun, right? We um, we were doing some depth measurements from for Santa. So we wrote some code. It was some sliding window stuff, um, and we got two stars. Which is not bad. And uh, what I liked most is that, you know, we have a lot of active chatters. That was nice, right? And we had, um, we could like, we really dug down into the core, right? We really looked underneath the hood of, um, of GHC and Haskell, right? And uh, we really saw what was happening. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens today. Uh, you can see that uh, I've got um, the calendar open where we left it yesterday. I haven't looked at today's exercise, but I've seen on uh, I've seen on uh, Twitter that uh, there's some parsing involved. So that's gonna be fun. All right, let's get to it. So, we go back to admin of code, and, uh, oh yeah, we got a new subscriber, like, one minute ago. Yeah, Jumbo. Jumbo holiday. Good evening. Kola Kultu. Yeah, I'm Icelandic. It is the best country. Right? Um. Alright. We got two chatters. Hello. Okay. So, okay, yeah. So I think the first one was like we were on a submarine. And then we found some depth stuff. Okay. Now we are, um, let me zoom in a bit more. There we go. Now, yeah. And now we are doing the next step. Right. So how to pilot this thing? Seems like a submarine can take a serious commands like forward one, down two, or up three. So forward, down, or up. Okay, we're going down and up. We're, we're, so yeah, we're driving a submarine. Okay. Down and up left vector depth. And now, so they have the opposite result of what you might accept. Back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we dive deeper. So we go, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, note that since you're on a submarine down... Yeah, okay. Submarine is all there have planned. Of course, your puzzle input. You should probably figure out where it's going. For example, forward 5, down 5. Forward 8, up 3, down 8. Forward 2. Your horizontal position and depth both start at 0. The steps above would then modify them as follows. Forward 5 adds... 5 to your horizontal position, a total of 5. Down 5. Depth. Okay, after following these instructions, you should have a horizontal position of 15 and a depth of 10. Uh, multiplying, yeah. Okay. That seems, uh, seems pretty good. So, let's get over. Now I can see everything I have open. Uh, all right is from yesterday let us make a new folder make there day two and we uh, open that folder how we do it we do control k and oh i think uh whatever day two we're gonna open uh, no, this was that core we were already yesterday. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to connect again to the instance. That's fine. All right, new file. Text file. Module mainware. Main equals. Oh, we need to make this bigger, right? This should be seen. Put stir Ellen. Hello, Ellen. Ellen the code. Okay. Well, see, it detected it was Haskell. Um, 
but it suggests a very bad name actually date to dot hx okay uh, yes we have a bunch of suggestions let's uh, just ignore those for now right so let's uh let's see what we did yesterday right um uh, for the parser and stuff day one at hs uh what we did was we had this map read int of read file right so i think the first thing to notice today is that uh we don't actually so we just sum up the four words right and then we go up and down up and down um we don't actually need to we don't need the order right we just need to find out yeah the sum of the four words and uh, then the sum of the downs and uh minus the sums of the ups right so let's say here let's see gci yeah okay now we're in the wrong directory actually go back day two okay uh, let's make a new file and it's just called example paste it and we do a Example is going to be uh, io list of strings, and it's going to be a example is going to be lines over read file example. Okay, let's uh, load this and see what happens. Day two, right? Yes, all right, example. All right, so we got the example. Okay, now we're gonna parse it. So we could write a proper parser here, but that is too much work. So we're just gonna say data instruction. Okay, it's gonna be up int. No, yeah, up int. Well, let's have it in a different order forward int and down int up int deriving eq or whatever okay and now we are going to write a parser that takes a string to an instruction a parse Okay, parse inster. So parse inster. So you know we could write a proper parser here with like blah blah yeah, but uh, that is just a lot of stuff, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cheat. I am going to say uh, imp and uh, say a. Uh, take so if it starts with forward hmm. now actually let's let's do the let's write a proper parser right uh i think that's more fun and read we're gonna write a read parser we're not gonna install parsec read p haskell because they are pretty nice actually the read p it's in base, right? So we don't uh, we don't need to install any packages. I mean, it's a bit slower than these parsecs, micro parsec, all those, but this is nice, right? So we actually say here um, import text.parser combinators.parse no read p, right? Yeah, I have some packages installed because I was doing some experiments. Hey, Jonathan. Welcome back to the stream. 
he's been with us since day one. Right, uh, now, so read instance Haskell. Uh, yes, Mega Parsec is better. But uh, it means you have to. Um, you actually have to. It's more. I uh, so I I like this because you can just say read p to s, which turns it into a reads parser. And that's exactly the instance of read, right? So I can say here. Reads prec or read prec, right? Uh, so we can we can actually do this, right? Uh, let's see. Here. So this is going to be parser read p of instruction parser equals undefined. Okay, and then instance read instance Instruction where reads prec. I don't care about the. Uh, we don't actually care about the. Uh, the yeah, we're not gonna care about the presidents. I mean, it matters later when you know we're doing actual algebra and stuff. But uh, as we know, there's only one instruction per line. We're not gonna care about it. So we are gonna say const and then read p to s um which is nice okay read p to s uh instar parser okay now we uh, just have to write our instar parser. And uh, then we, our, you know, instars goes to file path to list of instruction is just uh, instars equals map read at at instruction uh, dot lines over so we actually can do like this fmap this dot read file and now it's complaining that uh, yes so we don't have type applications all right uh, I think Haskell is a strong choice for the first two guys. Yeah, you're the one that uh, are using the. <laughs> There's an AOC 2012. Hey, little Annie. She was here last year as well. Even longer than Janetin. No, so there's a like a a racket thing that allows you to submit AOC. 2021 solutions <laughs> so there's a tweet about it right and if you say no it calls you a coward and i kind of assume uh will bowman wrote that but yeah all right <sighs> we're drinking chai today by the way you know why because it has a uh, cardamom right so it it's a super Christmassy drink and it's a new moving one it's got moving papa I like it it's a different one from yesterday try to figure out how many moon cups I have from the stream all right back to parser cardamom is good no okay so uh right how do we write this so it, yeah so we have so we have a choice okay uh, yeah uh, 
Hey. Yeah. How, so I always forget how we do this. So we have a... Uh, so we have like a... Where P... F is gonna be... This is going to be... Um... Okay, so to parse. Okay, so we're gonna take the uh, parse one string. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have a. Okay, a, yeah, no, this is different. Yeah, so parse one string. Okay, so this is gonna be a choice of a map pars one over like a forward up and down and then this one is undefined okay uh, a masala chai is good okay uh, now Type of pars uh, one is going pars one. It's going to be a string to read the instruction. Okay, so I forget how we. Um, how do we chain it again? So I think it's like because it's a monad, right? So I think it's. Uh, so we let's just do like this. We do do. And we do a. Uh, let's actually make it a bit clearer. Import qualified text dot parser combina combinators dot p as p. Okay, so we do a uh, parse dot stringster, and we ignore the output. Uh, bars. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's complaining that we were not finished, right? And then we skip spaces, and then we we parse an int, right? Um. And to parse an int, we can we can uh, you can use a read spec. So we can do um, read spec at int, uh, and we just give it some whatever. Now this is gonna be read s, right? So we do read s to read read s to p, right? Wait, what was that? Read s to prec. Uh, no. Okay. So then we uh, Now we do the string again, right? So we do case stir of. So if we got a forward, we're returning forward of num, right? If we got up, we return up of up of num. And if we got a down. We return down up. So this one should do something. Uh, that's actually just move it like this. And these are wrong now. 
Okay. Now. We reload. Okay, pars one. Uh up up five. Alright. Um So we also need show here actually. Show. And then we need to reload. And then so we want to parse one up five. Now actually we want to say read at instruction up five. Uh, set x type applications. Nice, see? It just works. And because we stole the parser from hints, we can just do whatever. What is there a read as to p uh, read as to prac was called? Let's see. Read as to Oh, okay. It just does, uh... It just does the same. Okay. It doesn't matter. So now we can parse one. So let's say, uh... Insters... Example. Uh, yeah. All right, sorry. Okay, so this is our input. Forward, down, forward. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Uh, of course, we could have just um, we could have just manually inputted it, right? But uh, yeah, this is more fun. Okay, so now we have instructions and what were we going to do? Right, so we want to sort. Uh, right, Im import data.list sort. Ah, yeah, okay. So eyes, it's going like this. Sort eyes. Okay, a uh, let me say group. All right, they're not equal, of course. Hmm. Now we need to kind of group them by the. Um, so we we sorted them, right? So now we want to grab all the forwards. Um, so let's just do that, right? So, uh, let's define is forward. So it's now it's kind of like a trinary thing, right? Something like that. So is forward is going to take an instruction. And it's going to take... Uh, it's gonna return a pool, right? And is um, let's actually do it a different way, right? Uh, we just say from forward, and we go to a maybe int. So this one is uh, gonna be forward. Uh, n is equal to just n from forward equals nothing if there's something else then we copy paste these and we say you know forward up and we copy oh no we have too many these and we say up down S up down. Okay. Uh, 
so i mean so what we could do is like we can make sure yeah we only walk the list once blah 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 but uh, that doesn't really matter so we're just gonna we're gonna have so we're gonna have the uh the sum of the four words is gonna be some dollar map may be from forward forward is oh, yes, right uh yeah okay import data dot maybe so the sum of the four words is 15. so okay let's uh, just do the problem right so task one is going to take a uh, file path and it's going to return io int so task one uh, equals okay so uh, we first get the instructions so eyes is going to be instars of the fp okay then we're going to say uh, for some uh, let for some equals some map maybe from forward uh, EIS and then we have up sum which is gonna be from up and then we have down sum We'd like to get down some uh, with from down. And of course, here we are walking the list three times, which is not the best, but whatever. Um, and we also could make it like a set or whatever, but uh, let's actually do that, right? Let's just say it's uh, fours it's ups and downs and then we just do the sum later okay so uh for sum is going to be sum of fours and uh so we add the ups and we subtract the downs so it's going to be uh with what what is it called again horizontal Okay, so it's called Horiz. It's gonna be the sum of the fours. And depth is gonna be the sum of downs minus sum of ups. And then we return a uh, Horiz times depth. And yeah, we have to import data dot uh, maybe nice okay and this is depth what's wrong with this there was nothing wrong yeah we don't need this bracket okay now let's load it and let's just call main is do task one uh, example uh into print okay so we do r and then we just run main and we get 150 which is what we expect okay uh exactly so we get our puzzle input copy paste it save it okay and we are going to say input And let's run it. One six seven zero three four zero. Let's check if that's correct. All right, first one done. Boop boop. That was too hard, and it was very fast. Right? We didn't even. I mean, we didn't even have to wait for it to compute. Right? It just kind of happened when I pressed enter. Let's see if the so sometimes like you do these things right and that and you make the second one super easy because of how you did the first one uh, But sometimes it's the opposite, right? 
you are oh yeah okay based on yeah so let's hope our our way to doing it uh, wasn't too bad based on calculations the plan course doesn't seem to make any sense you find the submarine manual and discover that the process is actually slightly more complicated in addition to horizontal pleasures in your daemon and f you also need to track turn value a which also starts at zero the commands also mean something entirely different than you first thought down increases your aim and up decreases your aim it decreases your depth by your aim multiplied by x okay so five okay yeah so down five okay so forward eight adds eight to your horizontal position a total of 13 yeah because your aim is five right so you're so we have now we have to now we can't just sort them and do it right all right let's say let's get to it so task two um takes in a file path and io int task two fp equals do is is this the same instars fp now we're gonna say a uh, return process is um so the process is going to be it's going to kind of take in the depth aim and is okay so where process and the depth okay so it's actually depth aim is okay so it's actually zero and zero so if we're on the empty list um We just return depth times. All oh, right, so we need to actually have our depth and aim and horus. So it all starts at zero in depth, and we multiply that by horus. This is just the uh, depth times horus. Okay, we don't do anything there now. Okay, process. Depth aim or is okay. Uh, if the current instruction is let's just do the up and down because that only changes the aim. So we have up and rest that's equal to process depth depth minus n aim. Uh, okay, yeah, so it doesn't actually change the depth. Right. Uh, it just changes the aim. Well, uh, then let's say minus n here. And uh, for down, it's gonna be plus, right? Let's aim plus. Now, what happened for forward? Uh, then our depth does two changes. Okay, so the horizontal position is going to change by n, or is plus n. And our aim stays the same. But the depth is going to be depth plus aim times n, right? Um, right, so what is it complaining about? Process, this is supposed to be an int to int to int to instructions instruction to int right oh yeah oh, I, and i have to 
past the reds here. Exactly. It's not too bad, right? It's just a... Uh... I mean, we're essentially just writing a very basic loop, right? After we wrote a parser. And, uh, yeah. Doesn't seem too bad. Let's see. Now let's do task 2 on example. That was 900, which is the same as here. Now let's do task 2 on the input. Very fast again, and we get something. Let's see if it's correct. All right. That was quick and easy. Uh... Yeah, so I got them both quite fast. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, there were no tricks really. Well, this is these were just straightforward. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, so like you need to know about these parsing things. But uh, the not really nice thing about Haskell is that you you have all the monads and applicatives and all that stuff, right? So parsing just it's it's just a monad, right? So you have all these parsing functions, but because a read p is actually a monad, you can just use do, right? So we just here we just kind of parse the string, right? And then so as we just, so we're we're looking at one string, right? We say parse string. We say uh, skip spaces and then we read the number, right? And okay, this read prec uh, is actually going to be. Yes. So, so actually we can, we, we don't even need to ignore this, right? We can just say now. Okay. We actually need the precedence there. Um, but let me see. We can do it here, right? We can't ignore it at this point. So we just say like this. Okay, and then we ignore the int, but we could probably kind of parse it here. But we, we have only one per line, right? So let's see how fast it is. Um, oh, yeah, okay. No, yes, yeah, so we do task two on input. Okay, now let's close it. Uh, GC03 day2.hs dump simple. Let's just dump the code right away, right? Ayo. That was not what I wanted. Uh, dump file. Well, what did we say yesterday again? Crash history grab D dump D dump to file to file and we need to change the flag so that it actually compiles it. Right now let's run it again and let's just see how fast it takes. Day two. Yeah, okay. Zero... Uh, 10 milliseconds. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, we look at the file. And we generate it. What happens? Right, so here's all our parsing stuff, right? So we have the forward. It's all like strings. Read instruction, okay. Let's see. Parse one string. So it's 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 just checking the EQ strings, right? Uh which one is this? So this one is read instruction 17. Yeah, exactly. So 
so you can see that a like the parser turns out to be you know it, it's literally just checking like is the is it equal to the right string and then uh, we what is this so okay so we we if we have an empty list we do this otherwise if we have uh what does this mean like a string concatenated to uh is it maybe like the first character so we end up with like main forward okay and it So it, it checks, right? It checks if it's equal to the string. And then it just goes up or forward or down. And then it keeps going. So I'm guessing that this kind of is the front of the entire list. But how does it know like the length? I'm not sure about that, right? Oh, okay, so this is the go go function. So this is like the okay so this is like after we've kind of broken it up <laughs> yeah so this is the thing right like once you start using these libraries i mean it's a bit hard to read all this right we use skip spaces yeah, I, I, it's, I can't really explain what's going on here. Let's uh, check, right? What happens if we don't have O3? They're just O, right? So it doesn't do all the super optimization stuff. We have to close this and we open it again. Okay, it actually doesn't... It actually doesn't change that much. It still has this base EQ string. And it's just checking that this VS3X is equal to the string. Okay, yeah, okay, so this is a function that actually it grabs the string and then it checks if the string is equal to the thing, right? So what I don't understand is like pars one. Um, like the, this is a string. Like, but where where does the pars one get this string from, right? So here we have another pars one. And here it's still being passed this string. So this one is... Okay, wait, so here it might be, right? No, this is just making it at the right type. This is just the type. Where is this invoked? Pars one. Um, okay, I guess this is just the top level function. Maybe there's something more here. Pars one is main equals pars one. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see. But if we kind of at this point we kind of already have the string, right? It's already kind of split up. So this is read instruction 11. That is the original string. Oh, right. Sorry. This is not the string that we split on. This is actually the, yeah, the, like the, the forward or up. Yeah, like the original one. So this is just the string that's doing this, right? 
But this parse string here, that's something else. Let's see, sorry. Yeah, that was not as mysterious. So that's why we just check the string. Um, okay, but where, how, do, how does we do the actual thing? Write instruction 13. Um, okay, so I think it tries to parse. Yeah, okay. I think it just calls some of the reach stuff. Yeah. All right. Not so much happening today actually not as much as yesterday um it's just harder to diagnose there is less going on in chat i don't know why that is people more excited last yesterday i guess right it was more of a oh admin of code is starting now it's just more of a okay what is this anyway i think we solved it quite nicely i mean we kind of avoid doing the iteration here but here we actually need to do the iteration because it matters like in which order we do it um and we can probably we could probably do it faster but like you know this took no time at all uh so i think we're just gonna be pretty happy with it right let me actually add a git it here it add day one Star star dot gets get status. Yes. Git commit am and let's throw up the code, right? We might as well have it up there. Uh now you'll be able to see all my private repos. Oh, that's okay. New repository. Urgent of code. Code. 2021. 2020 is already exists. Yes. Okay. Create repository. Git remote add. Git at github.com. Days one and two and get push. Get push set upstream origin master. All right, then the advent of code code. Oh, wow, it's slow. That's not. Git, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like git bub. Git remove. Here we go. Now oh, it's up there. And you can check it out. Uh, I'll add a, on, let me add a license actually, add file, license, choose a license template, MIT, good stuff, commit new file, no, I didn't want to commit a branch, oh my god, and pull request, that was a lot of buttons for one file. And I want to create dot git ignore. And we were gonna use Haskell. Alright. 
I think now we committed directly. Yes. Good stuff. Oh. Alright, now it's licensed and all. Not bad. Um Yeah. Alright. So thank you for today. Uh wasn't short long this time, but uh will be longer uh, in the coming days. I mean it gets harder and harder. This was just I think it was particularly easy because it's so easy to parse in Haskell, right? So Haskell is a good choice for this one. Um, I won't be streaming tomorrow. Uh, I'm getting a visit from mom all the way from Norway. And uh, yeah, we're going to go to an amusement park. I mean, you have to receive uh, mom, right? You cannot. You can't tell her like, no, mom, I got my string. So we're going to do a double feature on Saturday instead um, where we do day three and day four at the same time. Hopefully they're not super hard. And uh, yeah, and then thanks little Lenny. That'll be super nice. All right. And then I'll upload day one uh, to the YouTube channel like I did last year. Right. So we'll have all of them there. Uh, so if people want to, you know, check out some Haskell coding, it's going to be good stuff. All right. Thanks again for today and, uh, catch you Saturday. I'll, I'll put it up on my Twitter, like Tritlow on Twitter. This is a links like below the channel where you can see, uh, yeah, my, my Twitter and that's where I put all my links and stuff and Tomorrow, uh, let's see, time is, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll probably know on Saturday. Yeah, next stream, I'll know if my paper got in. But it's anywhere on Earth on December 3rd, which means that it's not gonna be uh, for another 18 hours at least. But yeah, thanks for showing up today. Uh, and... Uh, See you, hopefully, yeah. So, just before we leave, right, are there any questions? Do you think this went well? Or also, like, just feedback on the stream, right? So, now I have the Christmas music. Uh, I think this is a fine setup, right? It, you know, you can, you can see me, you can hear me well. Um... I think there was an issue with the VOD yesterday, actually, because I had it set up so that it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't, like, the Christmas music wasn't allowed to be there. All right, so I would upload it, but without the music channel, which is good if you're streaming, you know, copyrighted music. Um, but what I'm listening to is called Stream Beats, and they are, like, copyright-free lo-fi Christmas music. So it's super nice to, to have for these streams, right? And they have like a huge selection, so uh, I like them. Uh, they're not sponsoring me. Right? I just like them. Use them for your stream. It's nicer with music, right? Alright. Thanks again for today and uh, catch you Saturday. Right. Bye. <laughs>